smile. Good morning, everybody. Morning. My, cam my morning. camera is twisted because Joseph played around with it. So I don't know how this is appearing with you, but uh, to me here it seems twisted. So I don't know how it is. But anyway. Morning. Good morning. We have a low and lazy start this morning. Seems like everybody is still sleepy with chinky eyes, sleepy eyes. Because we had a very late night. These kids are trying to rush their uh, completion of school requirements and we're, we've been extending the evenings. Okay, anyway, today is a very beautiful feast day. It's the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Hi, Chevelle. Yeah. Chevelle seems to be the only one who's bright and uh, cheerful this morning. Wait, who's, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe? Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe is is uh, Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. The one in green. The one who, yeah, who is uh, dressed in that very nice um, uh, uh, Mexican style um, kind of garment. Okay because she appeared to Juan Diego, Saint Juan Diego, whose feast day we celebrated on the 9th, on December 9th. She appeared to Juan Diego uh, uh, asking, asking uh, practically, it was, it was to uh, ask for a shrine to be built okay, in, uh, in what is now Mexico City. And, and so that uh, people can, um, the faith can spread more among uh, the uh, native uh, Mexicans, and uh, and um, and for devotion to Our Lady uh, to be sp to spread also in Mexico. Okay, well, so today is her feast day, Our Lady of Guadalupe. So let's read the Gospel for today, which comes from Saint Luke. Uh, it's a pretty long Gospel. And this is the gospel that has to do with the Annunciation. When, when, our, uh, when our lady received that uh, message from the angel Gabriel. So, huh? so let's read it. The angel Gabriel sent, was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. So there's where we get the prayer of the Mary. Hail Mary. The Hail Mary. The, the Hail Mary came from the words pronounced by the angel Gabriel to Our Lady. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor in God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I have no relations with a man. And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So this feast uh, today, um, or this gospel reading today, is a very, very important uh, piece of the puzzle in salvation history. Remember how um, 
the whole purpose of uh, Christmas, right, is the coming of our Lord. And that our Lord came to earth in order to? What? In order to redeem mankind, right? But, but, all of this plan of God was hinged, was hinged on one very important response. One very important um, uh, historical occurrence. And what was that occurrence? What was that circumstance? It is Our Lady's acceptance of her calling, of her vocation. Of course, it's difficult to, uh, to, to, uh, to even conceive of a situation where Our Lady could have said no, right? To the, to the vocation, to the calling that God had given her. Because in the first place, God had already prepared her. God had already uh, made her immaculate, right? We just celebrated the Immaculate Conception. God has, has already prepared her soul uh, so that by the time that our Lord actually announces to her her vocation, her calling, her purpose on earth, she could readily respond affirmatively and say yes to it. But then again, but then again, um, that was not certain. Why? Because she was free. She was a free being. She had freedom. Okay? And she could have very well said no. She could have very well gotten afraid of the prospect of being the mother of God. And she could have chickened out. And she could have told Gabriel, well, wait a minute, I don't think I'm prepared. Or I don't think I like this. Or I don't think I, 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 don't think, uh, I could do it. So uh, uh, please postpone it first. Uh, you know, let's, uh, let's, uh, give me time to think about it. But no. Our Lady said, be it done to me according to your word. Of course, Our Lady expressed a little bit of an apprehension which is not doubt, eh, as many people uh, think it is, when she said, well, how is this going to be since I have no relations with a man? The question of Our Lady to the angel Gabriel was not an expression of doubt. Rather, it is an expression of the willingness to obey precisely. She wanted to, to know how God will make it happen so she can obey it, so that she can actually uh, follow it. So she was asking uh, the angel Gabriel, well, how can I obey? Can you tell me how it's going to happen so I can obey it better? Okay? That was the disposition of Our Lady. That was the kind of obedience that Our Lady had towards her vocation. Okay? So it was not an expression of doubt. It was not an expression of a lack of faith. It was not an expression of disbelief in the angel's words. It is rather an affirmation of her desire to obey. That she had to ask, how is it going to happen so that I can obey better? Okay? So, there are many lessons for us to learn in this particular gospel in, in, in today's feast. But, um, you know, um, the, biggest, the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway here is really um, how we respond to the will of God. How we respond to the things that God asks us to do in this life. Every one of us has a vocation. Every one of us has been given a vocation by God. And at this point, you know, you're still young. Eh? Maybe you don't quite understand how that's going to happen. Maybe you don't quite have, a, have an idea of what it is that God might want from your lives, young, uh, young as you are at this age. But let me remind you that when Our Lady received her vocation, she was about your age. She was about 14, 15, thereabouts. See? When, she, when she got her uh, a calling from God. And that tells us that, well, nobody is too young to, uh, to understand uh, the meaning of vocation. Nobody is too young to be called to the service of God. There are plenty of saints who answered the call of a vocation from God at a very young age. Okay? You have uh, Dominic Savio, for example. How old was he? Jacob? 15. See? He was 15 when he heard 
uh, uh, his calling from God. We have uh, Saint Tarsisius, right? We have uh, who was the who are the saints that you've been reading about, Sophia? Uh, Alexia. Okay? We have Alexia. We have who else? We have uh, who was this uh, this 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 girl who was um, who, Maria, who, who Goretti. Maria Goretti? Okay. They huh? Who? Oh, 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 the children of Fatima. They were even younger, right? And all of them, all of these kids, like you, were all very young when they received the calling that God uh, asked them uh, to, to perform in life. You see? So there's really no age uh, limit. There's no age uh, uh, reference as far as vocation is concerned. God can communicate your vocation in life as early as now. And it doesn't have to be a special, special calling. Because really, by virtue of our vocation, all of us are already called to perform a certain vocation. What is that vocation? Our, our baptismal vocation. Our vocation of being children of God. Our vocation of being uh, children of God in the Catholic faith. See? That is our baptismal vocation. Our baptismal calling. So just like Our Lady, we have also received that already. The question is, how are we living up to it? How are we actually fulfilling our vocation as children of God? Okay? Which later on in life, later on in life is going to receive a little bit more of a refinement. Okay? So the, being children of God is like our generic vocation. A little later on in life, your God is going to uh, communicate to you something that's more specific to you and for you alone. Like the same way he did to Our Lady. Eh? He communicated uh, in this narration of today's gospel, he communicated a very specific, unique role for Our Lady. He did the same with St. Joseph. right? Uh, uh, also through the announcement of, a, uh, of an angel in a dream. He, he did the same to all the other saints. Everybody was given a unique vocation, a unique calling. And all of us are going to receive the same thing. Okay? Mommy and I received that very unique calling, very unique vocation of being married to each other, not to anybody else. That is part of that vocation. To be married to each other and to be parents of this family, of you. Okay? Not of any other children, not of any other family. Okay? So this is the unique vocation we had received. Okay? And each one of you will receive something similar. Either to a vocation to marriage, to be married to somebody in particular, and to engender the children that God is going to give you. Or maybe some of you, God willing, might be called to the priesthood. Some of you might be called to become nuns or religious or some of you may also live single lives and, and carry out a specific mission in the world. So it really depends on what God might have prepared for you in the future. Okay? That is going to be your vocation. Now, but the question perhaps to ask is, well, how are we going to even <clears throat> approach that? Right? At this age, when you are this young, this early, how are you going to even uh, approach that prospect of understanding your vocation? For now, for now, the best Catholic practice for you as you are yet discerning what that vocation might be is to just live each day, just live each day, every day of your lives as faithfully as you can to that generic calling of being children of God. Okay? Live out that calling, that vocation. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. How am I living out that vocation? How am I trying to be worthy, a worthy child of God? So you take care of your prayers. You take care of the, our practices of piety. You take care of your devotions. You take care of the way you communicate with God. You take care of your studies, which is all part of your vocational calling now. You take care of your schoolwork. 
You take care of your house chores. You take care of each other. As brothers and sisters, you care for each other. All of these things are preparations for you to respond later on to whatever it is that vocation might be. Okay? How do you think Papa and Mommy were able to respond to this vocation of marriage? It was because of how we practiced our lives when we were kids all the way up. See? How, then, how can a priest... Uh, be, be disposed to receive a calling to the priesthood well, it's because that priest hopefully has grown up in the practice of the faith understanding the faith very well how does a nun grow up to have that vocation or anybody else for that matter okay? it is by starting young it is by starting at an early age already being prepared because this is like the ground that is being uh, seeded and watered and fertilized in order that it might bear fruit in the end. In the same way that Our Lady was prepared by God, in the first place by making her immaculate, conceived immaculately from the womb, eh? and because of that initial grace of being free from sin, well, she grew in virtue. She grew in virtue and tried to develop herself to the point where she was very well prepared to receive that vocation. So it's a good Catholic practice. That is what we can do. Be prepared. Discern, but be prepared by living out our uh, Catholic faith very well each and every day. And those of you who might have already found that vocation, well, the important thing to do now is to sustain it. Sustain it. And, and, and reaffirm, reaffirm all the time your desire to serve God in and through that vocation. And make it prosper, make it grow, make it develop, enhance it, uh, make it sweeter. For those of you who are married, well, make that marriage a lot sweeter than the first time that you met your spouse. Make that marriage a little bit more convenient for each other. Make that marriage a little bit more harmonious. That is the way you carry out uh, your vocation to marriage. Those of you who are priests will live up to your priesthood better. Those of you who are nuns live up to your vocation better. And if I have a word or two for priests and nuns, pray more. Pray more. Work on your piety. You priests and bishops who are listening to me. <laughs> I know I have a lot of friends there who are priests and bishops who are listening to me. Uh, I don't pretend to be... Uh, 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 better than you guys but uh, I think you know what I mean we need priests and nuns who pray who pray a lot and who spend more time in prayer and, and on their knees as John Paul II said on their knees if they are to perform their vocation very well so and, and uh, we need to we need priests and nuns who live out their vocation very well pray Pray, pray. That's what you need to do. And couples, the same thing. Married couples, the same thing. You, you cannot hope to live out your vocation uh, in marriage if you do not pray. If you neglect prayer, then you're, you're lost. Okay, folks, that's it for us today. Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Have a good day. And I hope that you foster that, that devotion to Our Lady so she may help you live out your vocation very well. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.